sequencing. Um, what we're sequencing are the rigid motions. Now, we have actually talked about rigid motions, but we haven't been using that term. Um, we know three of them. They are rotation, reflection, and what? Translation. And translation, yeah. That's the family that these are in. The general term for all of these are called rigid motions. The reason is because they preserve angle, measure, and length. So if you translate a, a shape, it keeps its same shape, or if you rotate it or reflect it. Okay? We've done these all individually. Now we are going to sequence them. What that means is we're going to do one or more of them in sequence, or one right after the other. Okay? So we're going to say, well, we'll say two or more together. Okay, so if you do more than one rotation, more than one reflection, more than one translation, or a combination of them, that's called a sequence of rigid motions. Now, you can, we are only going to do two. We're not, you can do up to ten. Um, but for our own purposes, we're only going to do two. Now, the reason that I'm taking the notes out of the packet is the packet takes three separate lessons to show you what I'm going to show you in one today. So sometimes this packet kind of like goes off the rails a little bit, in my opinion, and they do all of this extra stuff um, that I don't totally feel is necessary all the time. So that's why um, these are going to be extra notes. We will hole punch these and put these in where instead of doing lesson seven, eight, and nine all individually, this is all jammed in but one. We'll put those in there so you can use them on your test. Okay, two things you have to do. The first one is you're going to have to identify the sequence, okay? So they'll be like on here, you have two different shapes. Well, they're the same shape, but you want to tell how you map one onto the other using these things, rotation, reflection, or translation. So my question for you is, what motions will map figure A directly onto figure B? There's going to be two, two motions that you need to use. What is one of them? You're close. Not rotation. Okay, the first one is going to be reflect. Um, and we have to be more specific than that. Yes, we're going to have to reflect figure A. Okay, and where do you want to reflect figure A? Across what line? The y-axis, that's right. Reflect figure A across the y-axis. Now, in this type of problem, you don't actually have to do it, but I'm going to show you what that would do um, just because this is our note. So if I reflect A across the y-axis, that's this one, then I reflect each point. So this is 2 to the right. If you make it 2 to the left, it would be there. This point is 4 to the right. So if I make it 4 to the left, 2, 3, 4, it would be here. Um, this one's five to the right, so we would go five to the left, one, two, three, four, five, and then this one's three to the right, so we'd make it three to the left. Okay, so if you reflect this guy across the y-axis, this is what you get, which is why this is now a sequence of rigid motions, because you didn't land right on figure B, did you? What else would you have to do now? Now you have this figure here. You need to translate, right? Ha, um, which direction? Translate up. How many units? Three units. Okay, so if you moved each of these dots now three units up, you should land directly on figure B. And you do. Okay? This right here is called a sequence. Okay, so one and two together is a sequence of rigid motions. 
So that's the first thing you have to do is to be able to identify the sequence. Now you don't always have to draw it in like I did, but this is our note. So I thought, well, we'll draw it right here so that you can actually see it. But if you can do this visually in your head, that's fine. Okay, the second part you do have to draw. So the other thing you'll have to do is you're going to have to be able to actually perform the sequence of motions, right? Um, so this says, reflect triangle ABC across the x-axis, then translate the image for units right. Okay, so you just follow the directions um, in order. The order is going to matter here. Okay, so start by reflecting. Um, which one's the x-axis, the horizontal or the vertical? Horizontal. horizontal yep, so we're going to reflect across this. So A is three units down. To reflect it, where do you go? Three up, yep. One, two, three. And we're going to use dotted lines for the first one because that's not going to our, our final answer. So I'll show you in a second. B is one down, so we're going to reflect that one up. And C is three down, so we'll reflect it three up. And then here's where we're going to use dotted lines because this is not our final answer. That's the first part of it. That's your reflection. But now what do we have to do? Yeah, yeah. now it says we have to translate four units right. Okay, so we're going to take all of these and we're going to move them four spots. So I'm going to start with um, my B. One, two, three, four. So my B, and I'm going to put two lines there um, because that means I moved it twice. And my A, one, two, three, four. Here's A, double prime, and C, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to connect these now with our solid line because that indicates that this is our final answer. Uh, so you have to do the dashed line? You don't, I, I mean, you should because then when I'm grading it, I know which one is your final answer, you know what I mean? I, that way it's easy to see. Um, or if you wanted to use like a colored pencil or a marker or something to show which is which, that's fine too. Okay, so this one is identifying the sequence. This one is actually performing a sequence here. Okay, see the difference? Questions? All right, we're going to do um, one of each of the actual homework.